All right, so here's an example in 7.4. This is applications of trig functions, okay? Tr derivatives of trig functions. So this question right here says, triangle ABC is inscribed in a semicircle with diameter BC equals 10 centimeters. Find the value of angle B that produces the triangle with the maximum area. So if we draw a quick sketch of our semicircle, we have the diameter here is BC, and that's actually part of our triangle as well, I see, BC. So A is just somewhere, anywhere, over here in the triangle. Now, whenever this happens, if you have part of a triangle that's a diameter, this is always a 90 degree angle. If you didn't know that, that's okay. Um, I, oh, I guess uh, it doesn't say right triangle in here. I thought maybe it did say right triangle, but it doesn't. So this is a right triangle. That's just something that you need to know. So now you know, if you didn't know that before. Anyways, this is side B, and this is little side C. Now, the area of any triangle, because we're trying to maximize, remember, the area of what? A triangle ABC. So the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. Now, in our diagram, if this is our triangle, if BC was the base, then the height would be something like this, which doesn't help us. But if you think about it, this right triangle could be tipped over onto its side. And then this is side B, and this is C. So look now. B is the uh, base, and C is the height. See that? So <coughs> here, area really could be written as 1 half B times C. Now the issue is we want to find out the value of angle B that produces the maximum area. So we have to try and write things in terms of angle B right here. And of course we can do that. B, this little b is opposite. This little c is adjacent. And one thing I didn't put on my diagram yet was that the BC is 10. So the hypotenuse here is 10. So over on the side, we could say that the sine of B is opposite over hypotenuse. Or little b actually is 10 times sine of big B. You get so that? So likewise, we can write C in terms of big B as well. So that's the adjacent, and we can use 10 as a hypotenuse. So guess what? This is cos of big B is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so C is actually 10 times cos B. So that's really helpful. That's really helpful to have. Um, OK, Java updates don't really care about you. It's really helpful to have B in terms of uh, sine of big B and C in terms of cos big B because now the area over here equals one half what's B? It's 10 sine B and little c is 10 cos B. See that? So if we simplify this, this area actually now is a function of big B which you don't have to write that, but you can. So 1 half times 10 times 10 is 50. And then we have sine b times cos b. Mm -hmm. And now we can differentiate. So the derivative of a is, well, that 50 is a constant, so we can just kind of leave it out there and treat uh, this product differently. So this is 50, and then it's times. This is a uh, product rule, right, when we differentiate. so. Derivative of the first times the second, so that's cos b times cos b, plus the, deriv uh, the first, which is sine b, times the derivative of the second, which is negative, sorry, negative sine b, right? And if we, I'll just simplify that here. With me? Yeah. Yeah, with me so far? Okay. Um, don't, please don't go ahead and say, oh, this is 1, because that's cos squared plus sine squared is 1. So that's not 1. You can't just put a 1 in there. Instead, what we need to do is we need to let this equal 0 and find out the value for b, right? So we need to find our critical numbers. So if we divide both sides by 50, mm -hmm. uh, we still get 0 on this side. 
We get cos squared b minus sine squared b. And if I bring sine squared over here, it becomes positive. Take the square root of both sides, I get sine b equals cos b. So we're looking for the angle B that we're looking for here is is going to be the angle where the sine of that angle and the cos of that angle are the same. And uh, of course, if, if we're talking about, and these, this angle has to be between 0 and 90, right? Somewhere in there. And so we're talking about pi over 4, right? Because the values are root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So if you come up to this, um, you know, you get uh, pi over 4 is the answer for B. And that is um, the answer to the question because this is a critical number and uh, it would make sense that there is some maximum. There wouldn't be a minimum because it would, this, wouldn't, this C value wouldn't represent a minimum area because a minimum area would be like zero, right? So that would be at an angle of zero or, uh, well, just zero. So if we get an angle of pi over four, we can assume that that is the angle that gives the maximum. So angle B is pi over four, that's your answer. All right, now that's the answer to that question number three uh, in your assignment.